Italy and its beauty has been considered for centuries as a center of classical art, fashion, architecture, fine cuisine, music, and literature. Located in southern Europe and extending into the Mediterranean Sea, Italy is only slightly larger than the state of Arizona. The religious breakdown is easily calculated with 98% of the country being Roman Catholic and all remaining religions and faiths being represented by 2% of the total population. The Apostle Paul, after Jesus, is remembered by church historians as the most influential figure of the first century of Christianity and to this day. Without a doubt, one of the greatest challenges in the days of the early church and in the life of Paul was to unify the faith into a common bond of Jesus Christ. During the days of Paul, the Roman Empire extended from Britain to Arabia and was viewed as the major diplomatic and economic trade center in the world. Transportation was made easier for navigation due to the Romans developing new methods for travel. Christianity as a movement was not an unfamiliar subject in Rome. Those that had witnessed Peter's sermon at the day of Pentecost had spread their experience throughout the entire empire. The early church, which included these same witnesses, included both Jews and Gentiles who held no animosity toward each other. However, prejudices which were based in history and faith would begin to develop among the followers. These same believers were not viewed as enemies of the state of Rome, though they were in fact followers of Jesus Christ who himself had stood against the empire. The Christians, while trying to be model citizens, were still viewed as troublemakers and would receive indirect blame by Nero for the burning of Rome in 64 AD. The following persecution would take the lives of many believers, including Peter and Paul. But Paul's influence and the influence of the early church would forever burn in the hearts of the Romans, causing the city to be a leader of religious faith to this day. When we look to Italy from a religious perspective, we recognize Rome as the home of the Vatican and the central point of influence for Roman Catholics worldwide. Throughout Italy, there is a hunger for a deeper experience with God, an experience that allows for new forms of worship. Helping to birth these new experiences, a worship and praise conference was organized with integrity music artist Ron Canoli. This conference brought together several nationalities, and more importantly, Catholics and Protestants, to serve one purpose, to worship a holy God without any wall of religious difference. Organizers of the conference were humbled by the whole experience and blessed that the Lord would take this desire that had been in their hearts for 15 years and make it into something bigger and more magnificent than anything they could have imagined. I, I think that as we prepare ourselves for another millennium, it's obvious we're getting closer to seeing the physical return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I believe in my heart, I just really believe in my heart that praise and worship is what's going to actually usher the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Bible says in Thessalonians that the sky is going to unfold, the trumpet is going to sound, hallelujah, and, and, and we shall see him, we'll behold him in all of his glory and all of his splendor and might. Hey, and when those trumpets start sounding, that sounds like crazy worship to me. <laughs>
I think what is very, very special about Italy and the artistic works that have been done here over the past 2,000 years is um, you can see through the history of man and his relationship with God. You go in, in and out of different areas in history and it's very much expressed in the art. When you get into the, the Renaissance and Geniuses like Michelangelo, you can see them struggling with their relationship with men and their relationship with God. Michelangelo was really considered himself a poet more than an artist. And he was always struggling with trying to express to God his talent and everything that he had inside of him. And when you see him um, um, canvassing and frescoing the, these buildings and trying to reach God with what he knew he had inside as an artist. Many of the famous artists from the Italian Renaissance have been quoted as stating art was an expression of their worship toward God. Several of the Renaissance artists, including Michelangelo, featured biblical scenes in their work. Michelangelo's most famous works included the Statue of David, the Pietà, and the monumental painting of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel all reflected God and his creation. The Pietà, which historians believe was completed before Michelangelo was 24 years old, displays Mary, the mother of Jesus, cradling her son, the crucified Christ, in her lap. The Sistine Chapel was completed under heavy pressure from the Pope as a commissioned work. Prior to this commission to paint the scene, Michelangelo regarded himself primarily as a sculptor. He would now take on the greatest challenge of his life, creating images that have remained breathtaking throughout history. His paintings would tell the story of Genesis, Adam and Eve, and Noah. He would later be asked to depict the Last Judgment as part of the completed work. The Pope's persistent demands were perhaps not the main reason why he accepted the burden. First of all, he considered it as a duty and mission entrusted to him by God. He had served popes all his life and he wished to dedicate his last years to serving God. Thus he wrote to his nephew Leonardo, Many believe, and I believe, that I have been designated for this work by God. 
In spite of my old age, I do not want to give it up. I work out of love for God, and I put all my hope in Him. The artists of this period, like Michelangelo, displayed the love of God and desire to show the gift of God through their work, bringing to life the inner soul and the passion that burned within. It was the interpretation of scholars that many of the human figures seemed as though they appeared to break free from the stone that imprisoned them. It was their work, their calling, to bring to life the Spirit of God through paintings, sculptures, architecture, and poems. It was Michelangelo who passionately wrote, Painting and sculpture shall no longer calm the soul turned to that love divine that spread its arms on the cross to take us in, possibly referring to his work, the wood crucifix. During the Baroque period, Bernini's design of the Sant'Angelo Bridge in Rome focused its theme around the power of prayer. Two angelic figures created for the bridge were found by Pope Clement IX to be so beautiful that he would not allow the originals to be exposed to the natural elements and ordered that they be replaced with duplicates. Bernini stated that he attended to his work with great care, but that there must be something else, suggesting that it was the grace of God to which he attributed everything. These artists must have perceived the absolute and infinite in their art would impress the soul of whomever saw it to look toward God. Present-day believers are also searching for ways to point people toward God and find unity in worship. We feel like the way we've kind of felt we've been living this weekend is we feel like there's a big boulder there and we found a little hole with a little crack and we wanted to put a chisel in there and start, you know, hitting it and be catapulted into a different level into unity to praise the Lord. That's what we've been desiring for many, many years. I believe that this meeting that we're doing here this weekend, this conference, this recording, uh, is going to be a catalyst to propel the body of Christ here in Italy into a higher level in their worship experience, a higher level in their religious relationships as well. And I think there's going to be, uh, I think there's a possibility in believing, let me put it like this, I'm believing that this series of meetings are going to be a catalyst uh, for healing in relationships, of course, between Protestants and Catholics throughout the world, or at least bring us to a point where we can worship God together, because we serve the same God. We serve, we lift up the same Jesus Christ. And, and I believe that God is more concerned with us having unity in heart and spirit and placing uh, uh, spiritual things over doctrinal things. And, uh, and I believe that the worship is the key. Worship is the way to bring all of the body of Christ together. I have known the Father's care for me. He's been good. He's been good through it all. Always there for me. God's been good to me. I have known the Father's care for me. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Yes, He has. And through it all. God's been good to me Through the storm, through the night Come what may, everything will be alright I have known the Father's care for me God's been
yes, he's been good. Ooh, he's always there for me. God's been good to me. God's been Yes, God has been good to me.
I, I think probably the thing that I will be talking about for years and years to come would be the fact that that uh, just before this trip here to Italy, uh, I, I broke my leg. And the, the awesome thing is this, is that several doctors confirmed that the leg was broken through x-rays and through CAT scans. And then four days later, after the leg was broken, after we had canceled this recording, God healed the leg and put the leg back together and when you've been knocked down and, and, and laid out, you know, and, and, and you see the power of God pick you up. Not something that I could have done on my own, not something that doctors could have done, you know, but the power of prayer and the power of intercession and the power of just uh, the, 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 the Holy Spirit touching and doing the impossible doing in the in, in just doing the impossible and I just praise God for that the song says I still have joy after all I've been through <laughs> I still have joy I've been tested my faith has been tried Satan has attempted to destroy my life he's robbed abused Accused and stole He's done everything he could do To conquer my soul But I still have joy I still have joy After all I've been through I still have joy Oh yes, I still have joy I still have joy After all I've been through I still have joy Friends have left me They've questioned my faith The good I tried to do Was thrown back in my face The hurt and the pain Brought tears to my eyes But God has replaced the blessing For every tear that I've cried I still have joy Yes, I still have joy After all I've been through I still have joy says that the joy of the Lord is our strength and when we can put our trust in the Lord when we begin to rejoice and when we begin to praise him it's amazing what God will do he will give peace that surpasses all understanding amen hallelujah bring it up I still have peace. I still have peace. After all I've been through. I still have peace. 
Still, I still. 